What is going on, Hobby Family? It is your boy, K-Dub, and this is K-Dub's High Five. Five rapid-fire questions with your favorite hobby faces, and today, it's just another one of the favorites. He's at Mikey B Cards. He's everywhere. He's Twitter. He's Instagram. He's YouTube. He's one of the most positive people that I know. Hashtag positive vibes only. Yes, there it is. Uh, welcome, my guest, uh, Mikey B, at Mikey B Cards on Twitter. How are you doing today, brother? I'm awesome, Kate. Thank you so much for having me today. I have watched all these videos. I am super excited and honored to be a part of this series. Well, I'm absolutely honored that you would want to be a part of this series. So we're just going to keep rolling until people don't want to be a part. So all right, <laughs> how it works, man, I'm going to throw five hobby-related questions at you, one right after another. You can answer as long or short as you see fit. You ready to take on the high five? Bring it on. All right, man, you are one of the few dudes I know who the hobby is your business. Uh, kind of talk me through your decision to move into hobby full-time for your career. Sure. So I collected when I was a youth, like most people, took like a big 25-year hiatus, started back in the hobby in 2017, and, you know, was working full-time in a corporate job in healthcare. You know, great job, loved doing it and so forth. Um, and as the hobby side of things started to grow, started doing some breaks, started to kind of build a portfolio in a community, it kind of got to the point where like, you know, I do my regular job till about whatever, 5 p.m. I get home and then from like 5.01 till one in the morning, I was doing cards and uh, mm. my wife was like, you know, you're going to have to choose eventually <laughs> uh, and so forth. So, you know, we looked at a lot of things, considered a lot of things uh, when we were making the decision to start the business full time versus working, you know, in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we uh, the biggest thing we did was, you know, we kind of looked at the budget and we're like, all right, if we make the leap and this doesn't work out, let's say we don't make a dime, you know, are we going to be OK? And the answer to that question was yes. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, after budgeting and after a lot of discussions with a lot of people, it was just kind of taking a leap of faith. Yeah. And uh, I bet on myself and it just so happens that everything kind of fell together perfectly. And, and here we are. I mean, it's not, uh, I didn't do anything crazy or, or anything like that. It was a lot of research and a lot of conversations. And um, it was just got to the point too, I think with like the regular job where I was like, it was fun and, and engaging and so forth, but it was nowhere near what the hobby stuff was. Absolutely. I mean, it was like night and day. And I was like, all right, do something that I love every single day or, you know, push that aside and just kind of do the daily grind and easy decision from there. Absolutely. I heard somebody say one time, you know, if you find something you love and you do it every day, it never feels like work. And that's right. You never work a day in your life if you love what you do. That's beautiful, man. I love it. I love it. Well, let's talk about kind of your own personal hobby journey. I mean, you can talk about, you, you talked about collecting when you were younger and, and moving into the business. Who have been some of your biggest influences in your own personal hobby journey, whether that be personal collecting or business? Sure. So, you know, business wise, my biggest influence has been my wife. You know, she's obviously been right there by my side, 100% from day one, very supportive uh, for all the crazy things we do. Um, you know, it's interesting. This is a great business to be in. I love it. Um, but uh, nobody told me that when you're an entrepreneur, uh, you didn't have to work like crazy, crazy hours. So <laughs> it's 24 seven, man. Yep, so yep. You, don't, you don't become an entrepreneur to work less. That's for sure. Absolutely. Uh, but she's been awesome as far as support and helping me out, bouncing ideas. And it's great because she can give me a perspective of someone outside of like our own little group and so forth. So her and other family members have been very influential in yeah. how we built where we are and some of the things that we do. As far as in the hobby, I mean, there's a laundry list of people. Um, some of the ones that come up, uh, like kind of off the top of my head, uh, I'll give massive props to Rich Layton and Layton Sports Cards. They were the first place that I did breaks with way back in 2017. I remember my very first break. I remember every card I got, um, mostly because they weren't that impressive, but it was just, um, I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. And, and they were like the biggest at the time and still are. And I modeled a lot of what I did after them. Yeah. Um, and, and Rich is just a great guy. So I give him tons of props. Um, sure. and then I originally started, and I, I'm pretty well known on Twitter, but I originally started on Instagram. Okay. So the OGs of Instagram, you know, like myself, wow. and Ryan Card Collector 2, yeah. Steve, one of one card shop. I mean, those guys and I go way, way back. I mean, we were kind wow. of at the precipice. They, they way more than I am. So yeah. I kind of made the leap to Twitter and they stayed on, on the gram and, yeah. Um, I try to balance and so forth, but 
those guys were, were really, really great in having conversations around, because they were all in the same boat I was, you know, do we start a shop? Do we continue breaks? Or, you know, how do we engage more in the hobby? Um, yeah. so they were all very, very influential and, and, and great to kind of bounce ideas off of. For sure. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. So I know that you collect cards as well. Oh, yeah. So when you think about your own PC, do you have a favorite PC card or is there a PC card that you've you've been chasing or that you really want you know what's what's kind of your grail or what's your favorite card in your pc yeah i um i love any card that has a story so you know if i just purchase something or whatever it you know it could be really great but eh, or whatever so i love something that's connected to something else yeah or you know there's a there's some story about how i obtained it or whatever those are always going to be my favorite cards um, I bought a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, there's certainly a lot of things I'd love to have. Um, as a child, I was a huge baseball fan, uh, and the Braves were my team. Okay. So if I, I'm still on the lookout, I'm sure they exist somewhere. I'd love to get kind of like a generational card of uh, Dale Murphy, Chipper Jones, and Acuna, like three, okay. those three autos, because I mean, yeah. that's like the three different generations of Braves Absolutely. Uh, players from when I was growing up. I think that would be a really, really cool card to own. Um, as far as like what I currently own, I mean, my, my best story is when I bought the Andrew Luck Contenders Auto. Uh, it was a card I was chasing forever. I'm a huge Colts fan, and okay. obviously Luck was our QB for a while. Yeah. Um, I bought the card, and then 48 hours later, he announced he retired. Um, and so <laughs> the card uh, uh, drastically lost about, I don't know, 70% of its value. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what the card's worth. The, just the story of – doing everything to obtain it, getting it. And then that happened. And I was like, well, you know what? He's still my guy. So <laughs> that card, I will hold on forever. And it will remind me of many things. So. Oh, it's too funny. Usually I get stories about, you know, the, uh, the joy of obtaining <laughs> this card and then, but you still have that joy, except it's kind of a weird, awkward joy. The craziest roller coaster in, in like two days ever. The immense joy of like, this is a dream. It's most I've ever spent on a card. Yeah. Huge card. Rookie auto. It was graded. Nine, five, ten. It was wow. everything you'd ever desire. And I was so, so happy to have it. And then 48 hours later, I'm like, he's never going to play again. <laughs> so it was, it was devastating at the same time. The only, the only beauty in that is now you can never get rid of it. That's you true. Can. You can't. That's true. <laughs> I don't think I could give the card away anyway. So now it's, it's mine for life. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Well, Dude, being a breaker, man, you see all the products, you open the products, you get to look through the cards um, for your own rip, like grail rip. If you could rip any product, money's not an option. What are you ripping and why? Oh, that's a great question. Um, now, I've watched a lot of these high fives and everyone gives the 86, 87 Fleer basketball answer, Given. which of course, <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't want to rip that? There's so many great rookies in that, chasing Jordan and so forth. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go a different direction. I, okay. I would say that as well, but... I would love to rip right now 2017 National Treasures football. Yeah. Um, chasing Mahomes. I still yeah. think he is the biggest generational talent that we're seeing at quarterback. Um, either that or like 2018 Sapphire baseball would be fun. Chasing okay. Acuna, the rookie Sapphire would be cool. So those are those are two uh, products that I've ripped before, but long, long time ago. I haven't ripped yeah. them in a long time. I would love to open another boxer case of those. Yeah, and ripping them now, you would probably need to take out a second mortgage on your house. Yeah, anyway. I need a lot of uh, Andrew Luck rookie sales. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, man. Last question here. Um, you know, thinking about the trends of the hobby, there's a lot of people who are kind of moving more into the hobby as a business for them, whether that be a side business or full time. Uh, what advice would you give for those people who are kind of making the step into the hobby as a business or means to income for themselves? Sure. Um, it is probably the best job in the world. Um, it's a ton of work to build up your community and build to where you can do it full time. So my advice to anyone who's thinking about making that move is first and foremost, just make sure that you, you know, crunch the numbers and do the budget. Um, yeah. You know, there's lots of ways that you can, you know, earn revenue and so forth in this business. It doesn't have to be through breaking. There's, you know, card shows and flipping or, or whatever. Um, you have to be comfortable uh, because, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're not being successful in what you're doing, that's going to obviously put a strain on you and, and the hobby. And the yeah. hobby should be fun. This should be engaging. Um, yes. and I'd love to say it's not about, you know, revenue or anything like that. Um, and I worked in a nonprofit healthcare system and we used to say uh, no margin, no mission. So um, 
it's not always about the dollars and cents and so forth. It, it really is about um, the enjoyment aspect of it, being able to give back, being able to um, you know, make people happy because they get stuff for their personal collection yeah. or they hit a big card that they'll be able to sell and be able to do mm -hmm. something else with, uh, with or whatever. But I would say that, you know, the biggest thing that you have to do is, you know, make sure that you budget really well, plan for the unexpected because, you know, like we were talking about before we started this, this hobby changes so frequently, yep. um, whether it's how you get product or how things are priced or whatever, you just have to be prepared and you have to be flexible and roll with the punches. Um, I think part of the whole positive vibes thing is that you just got to uh, be acceptable of whatever comes your way and just know that, you know, it, it, it's a hobby. It's fun, even if yeah. it is your business. So, you know, don't try to get too stressed. You know, um, you should be enjoying it. If not, there's plenty of other things that people can do that can bring them joy uh, in life. So do yeah. something that makes you happy. That's the main thing. Absolutely, man. I love it. It's, it's beautiful. All right, man. I got a bonus question for you. All right. uh, Ooh, just because I got, I got you on here. Um, yeah. I loved kind of being able to follow along with, with your journey last year going through cancer. And I know that was a, a huge struggle for you and a huge challenge for you, but you kept the positive vibes um, throughout it all. And I know the hobby was a big part of that. Um, can you speak at all to just kind of what role the hobby played in kind of your journey through a major health crisis and, and walking sure. out of that into to yeah you know, um the day. i mean you hit the nail on the head obviously a very difficult time in life as um any major health issue is um mm -hmm. so a lot of uncertainty a lot of you know long recovery period major surgeries you know just the ability to do things that people consider normal again was a really really long journey and i think the hobby played a tremendous role in being where i'm at today but also keeping me positive throughout that journey. So whether it was someone sending me a text or a direct message, um, people sent me, you know, fun little things in the mail or whatever. Um, I read all of those usually multiple times a day. Yeah. And those were the things that really kind of kept me positive and kind of kept me going because it's, a, it, it can be a dark journey. Unfortunately, um, I'd love to tell you that everything was roses and it was super smooth and I was 100% positive the entire time, but there's there was a lot of rough patches. And when I had those patches, being able to talk to good friends, uh, being able to um, you know take my mind off things by whether talking about cards or sports or whatever yeah. was a tremendous relief. So you know I wouldn't be here without the positivity of people like my friend Brad, who essentially helped keep my business going while I was unable to do anything for a couple of months. Yeah. So without his help, we aren't where we are today. Um, I think of pe uh, people like Tracy Hackler and the crew at Panini who sent me uh, the perfect timing of a pick me up, my favorite box uh, contenders football. I love, I love it. it. They sent me one in the mail. It, it was something I got to open with my wife. We had a great time doing that. I mean, that was like, you pulled like a Joe Burrow, football. didn't you? I, well, uh, that was in another box, but we okay. did put a really cool autograph in the one they sent me, which was yeah. awesome. Yeah. I but, uh, yeah, actually, I don't know if I should thank them because then I ended up opening a bunch more. So <laughs> <laughs> that was actually maybe Nate. No, they were great. And then um, people like Jimmy, you know, uh, Jimmy sent me, you know, he, a guy I talked to just very briefly at the National once, yeah. you know, sends me this amazing care package with this, all these cool cult stuff. You know, and literally that got that got to the house like the day I came home from surgery. So cool. And I was just like, I mean, it was, I mean, my I was, my whole world brightened up. So, you know, uh, a lot of great people in this hobby, and I thank them so so much for everything that did that they did, because like I said, that kind of kept me positive and kept me going, especially at those dark times. So, um, kudos to them, man. I uh, I can't say a thank you enough. Well, kudos to you as well, man, because you uh, I'm sure you lifted a lot of people when. I remember how excited I was when you posted that, that victory post, man. And um, so I think a lot of people were right there with you, but in the, in the tough times, but also were there with you to celebrate. So um, I love it, man. All right. That's all I got. We got a high five at the end. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usually, usually that last question is, is, is not as deep, man, but I, but I, I just loved it, man. I loved your story and I love following along. So all good, man. happy to share. Yeah. You can make sure to check out Mikey B at Mikey B cards on Twitter. Also MikeyBCards.com. Feel free to follow me if you're bored at Mr. Kata. Always remember, be the good in the world. Hashtag positive vibes like my boy Mikey was talking about. Uh, appreciate you joining, man. And uh, y'all take care. This is a demo sound of free interaction.
Electromusic.com.